Okay, so my name is Maddie, and I am just making this video to recap my Youth with a Mission or YWAM experience. Um, for those of you who know me or know, I went to do YWAM in September 2022, and I got to go to the Kalua Kona base um, in Hawaii, so that was really just a great experience. Um, there's a whole reason why the Lord called me there, um, but that's where it all started, and it was just so amazing. And then for those of you who don't know what YWAM is, so a discipleship training school in Youth of the Mission is a six-month program where you spend three months in lecture phase where you just learn about God, His character, um, just about the Holy Spirit and about yourself too. And it's just really big identity walkthrough and learning more about God. And then you spend three months on missions. Um, so you just either go to another country. They don't tell you until you're at lecture phase, which is really exciting because you get to just have a surprise and then know and just trust that they prayed over it and that God is leading you there. And then you go on missions and get to apply everything you learn in lecture phase and see what it's like to do life on the mission field. Um, so for me, I went in September of 2022 and got back in March 2023 and I think I've always wanted to do missions like I knew since I was saved two years ago that I wanted to do missions but I had done a couple trips um within like the country I live in Canada but because of COVID I hadn't really gone international um but then I had this opportunity I just felt the Lord leading me to YWAM and I had been talking about it um before but I was never really serious about it um or like I never really knew the fullness of what it was um, but the Lord called me and I trusted him that it was like a good organization to go to if he was calling me and I went there and it was such a good organization um, And yeah, I just want to share a bit about that experience. So come along for this video um, um, So I'll just jump right into it so when I left I left in the end of September and first off like going to um, Hawaii for like the base was such an experience and such like um, an amazing thing to be able to do. I've always wanted to live in Hawaii, so when the Lord like told me to go where it all started and that happened to be in Hawaii, it was like the Lord was just fulfilling all these like desires in my heart. So super cool, um, but there's so many bases around the world and so many amazing places. So I always think like if you're gonna do a lecture phase somewhere, go somewhere you wanna go, somewhere you, you wanna like learn about the culture, somewhere you just wanna experience it because um, YM Kona does a really good um, job at integrating the culture and integrating integrating like everything um, like Hawaiian ceremonies and like the Samoan culture and different Pacific Islander cultures um, and just really identifying that like we're on their land and but like making it in a way that's just really respectful and I'm sure the other bases do it too so I'm sure if you went to like somewhere like Norway they probably have like Norwegian culture um, built into it um, yeah so I just think that there's so many great opportunities to explore different cultures and then since you go on an outreach you just kind of go anywhere in the world. Um, different programs have different specifications. So I'll talk a bit about my lecture phase. Um, I went to a program called Trailblazers and though it's not running anymore, they're kind of replacing it with one called Endeavor. But my focus was um, to go to the hardest and darkest. So the program was to blaze trails, to pioneer, to be bold, and to go to the hardest and darkest nations, kind of just share the gospel no matter the cost, um, which has been my heart since day one. Since being saved, I've always just had this um, heart to share the gospel and even more just like to go to the places where no one else wants to go because I can, I'm capable, I'm able, and if no one else will, like, you know, if I won't, who will kind of thing, you know, like, if I don't want to be a, a Christian that just takes a stand of a simple life, I want to show that um, the, what, the gospel I believe in the Jesus I serve, the God I serve is worth the radical risking my life because if I'm protected, that's his grace, and if something happens to me, his word is still good, his word is still true, and the people need to know it no matter the cost. Um, so, Hardest and Darkest, I was like, yes, sign me up. Um, so I signed up, went to that, um, and it was amazing. I mean, I met so many people who had similar hearts to me, so many people that had um, just amazing visions for what it looks like um, to be on missions, to do life, to serve Jesus. And I think that would be my advice, like anyone willing to do like a YWAM program or a missions program, like make sure you're doing um, like a disciple training school or some kind of training school that actually has like um, morals and values that you align with. Um, overall, like as we in Christianity, there's so many different like um, denominations and simple beliefs and down to it. But the truth is, is that we all have to come in unity that Jesus Christ is our savior who died for us in the freedom of our sins. Um, so that's a baseline, you know, always got to make sure you have that. But then when it comes to it, like do a school that's like, okay, are they focus on the hearts and darkest. Are they focused on reaching like Canada or America? If that's what your heart's called, like, are they focused on doing like uh, trekking, Bible trekking? Are they focused on women missions? Are they focused on men missions? Children, families, like all these routes, I just really would suggest to go to 
exactly what your heart cries to because that's the only way it will be fulfilled you know for following walking into our calling but also because you just get the experience to meet people who have the similar dream of you um so so wonderful and then so we spent three months there and we just learned about the character and nature of god and i've got to say like i truly think that during lecture phase i mean not only did i meet friends that are lifelong friends that like mean the world to me and getting to live with like 10 girls was just such an experience because you just don't get that anywhere else. Like 10 girls who are young, your age, who follow God, you just get to like have a great time all the time. And then you meet like people in your class that are like of all like boys and girls and just people all around the campus. And just really, it just feels kind of like a university college, but everyone loves Jesus, which is really amazing and sweet. And then at the same time, we're all going after the same goal of missions. Um, so there's like that connecting point. And then, but as like for the lecture phase of what we learned, it was just so amazing. I mean, there's so many parts that brought me out of my comfort zone or just like um, declared like more of what I needed to know or like something I was seeking. It actually just spoke into it. And we had all these teachers and all these things and it was so amazing. But something I really took from it was like, as Christians, we're not supposed to be comfortable in our faith. And I think sometimes we get comfortable. And there's times where like, what was said, I was like, okay, where, like, I want to say this for myself. Like, where is this in the Bible? What do you say about this? Pray about this because it like struck uncomfortability in me. And, you know, there's always discernment of spirits and like testing. And, and the thing about YM is they really produce a culture that's like ask questions. Like they want you to ask questions if you're not used to it. Um, I know I had a couple like people in my class from different denominations. And so like when the Holy Spirit came up or when certain things came up, like it was a new topic for them and it was a little uncomfortable. But then like even for myself, I was like, okay, let me see where this like lies in reference to the Bible and what I know about God. And it all lined up and like it was all good. And then that made me realize that like, though I might be like, sometimes we get comfortable in our faith, but we're actually called to like step out and be uncomfortable. And I think that was just a really great thing that YRM produces of just like this boldness culture and this like ask questions. Like if you don't know, like ask questions and let's learn together. Like there's no right or wrong answer. We're just trying to like teach you people come in to teach you based off what they've lived, what they've known, what they read in the Bible, what God's shown to them in their experiences. But like, there's so much room for um, conversation. And I think that's so cool. And I learned a lot. They also have like a counseling thing you can do when you're at YWAM. And for me, like someone who's walked through um, a few traumas in my life that I had never really got counseling for, um, especially Christian counseling, which I think is valuable as a Christian. Sorry for the dog. Um, it was really like amazing and valuable. And I really just like benefited from that. I was able to forgive some long time things that I was holding on to, people like traumas, holding things against myself and really learn. And I think that made me um, grow crazy as a person. And then, yeah, that was pretty much lecture phase. It was just a really fun time. Um, the schedule is hardcore, but it's overall pretty like chill. It's just kind of like living the adult life, which I think that coming right from high school or if you've never been in like the college or lived on your own, it's really beneficial as even just like a human growth to live on your own, to be able to like have to plan your own meals and plan your day and, and have responsibilities that you have to show up for. You know, I just think that's invaluable um, to just learn as a human. And then second is outreach. Um, so this is probably what I'll talk about most, but for outreach, I um, got placed in a group for Vietnam and I placed, so you get to pick like your continent for mine. And I picked Asia because I have a really big heart for India. Um, but then I got a couple like words from God and people and I just really felt Africa. And so when I was placed in Vietnam at first, I was like, what? No, God, I'm supposed to be in Africa. Like I didn't know, it comes as a surprise. So I didn't know it was coming so fast. And I was like, oh Lord, no. Um, but then I like, I told the leaders about it. They prayed about it and all this stuff. And they're like, well, no, we really feel like you're supposed to be on the like Asia team. But if you want to go on the Africa team, like we can make a way, but we just really feel like you're supposed to be on the Asia team. So I prayed into it and I was like, okay. And the people on my outreach team, like I didn't really know them all that well. I knew a few of them, but I just knew that like, I think most people on my outreach team, like I saw beforehand, like even before knowing them, I was like, oh, they're just cool people. And I, I just believe that was a lore drawing because we did end up going on outreach to, together. And I went to Vietnam and it was so amazing. Like the way our, um, like the way our group just like worked together and the way we had so much similarities, like there's struggles. I mean, when you go on outreach with 10 people, um, you're living with them for three months in high stress situations, you know, sometimes you're sleeping on the ground. Sometimes you like have to sacrifice your rights to spread the gospel, to love Jesus. And first you have to show each other like what Jesus love looked like, you know, before you show others, you have to love your like people that you're living with. And it's hard, like it's like family, you know, you fight and you struggle, but I think there's no other people that I would rather like fight with and I think that we all just like had things where we bonded connected and had things that we really um went on so I just know the Lord leaded that team together so perfectly and then for going to Vietnam man this was so amazing and so transformative I mean 
we went to Korea for two weeks too and I'll talk about that first so in Korea we taught English to at a Christian school to these kids and that was just something that made my heart like light up I love children and I always had teaching as a fallback and I didn't realize until then that like I actually my fallback isn't like I don't I don't need a fallback like I want to do missions and God just like really showed that to me through like teaching and not always doing the best but also just like loving the children like that's where my heart was um and then just korean food i mean deboke i think that's how you say deboke i don't know but it was so good i mean i loved korean food the food is just the best ever um and just being able to experience the culture i mean assimilate into it too like i think something big as a missionary sometimes we actually have to like give up our rights like our our calling paul like even said is like i become one to like show many i'm paraphrasing but basically like the idea as a christian is to not ever stop loving jesus and show, fully showing jesus but like in korean culture like they don't really say hi to strangers and they just kind of like keep in the like very neat and lines and tidy and and they pick up the garbage and they're respectful of the people around them we're not all cultures like sometimes in the western cultures we're more like we just do our own thing we're more us focused you know there's like less order um and so we assimilate in that culture because we don't want to stand out we want to let them know that we respect and honor their culture and that's how we show jesus and then we just actually like to, through getting opportunities of relationship and honoring their culture that's how you share jesus um so yes korea was really awesome but vietnam is where we spent most of our time and that was just life-changing i mean vietnam is a beautiful place with beautiful culture and a just beautiful people. I mean, it's a very warm culture, very different than Korea. Um, it's very like everyone saying hi. It's very warm and open, inviting people in. Um, very similar to many cultures that you've probably seen in like in the warm Asian countries. You know, like warmer countries have this tendency to be more like friendly, opening. Um, and so that's what it was. It was definitely like that. The Vietnam itself was just beautiful. Um, but I wanted to answer some questions that are like the most common questions people have asked me. Um, just to like sum up my experience and I'll definitely go more in depth if that's what you guys want but most of the time the questions I get asked was what was your favorite part um, for me my favorite part was just talking to the people in Vietnam and just getting to talk to them um, we did a lot of kids ministry and that was crazy I love children I love being able to be with them um, but I think the best part was for me is we went to a child like care home and there's all these little children and we got to like wake up at like five in the morning and they would do bible study like five in the morning 10 p.m like falling asleep they're so cute but they were just so like disciplined to follow Christ and they just wanted to so bad but we would wake up early at five in the morning like cook for them and hang out with them all day and we just got to experience that and I think that for me that was just really transformative of just being like these kids are so disciplined and like they don't have it all like they didn't always have like clean they never wore socks they didn't always have clean underwear they didn't brush their teeth you know they run around and that's just like in vietnam it's a third world country so they don't always have the resources we have but they don't see any lack in their life they just see like happiness and joy and, and they have god too which is just changed thing I've, I've seen i saw kids that were raised in a not a christian environment in vietnam and then versus the kids that were raised in a christian environment and the way that like they saw their life so fully was just so beautiful um not the other kids didn't but it just like there was just this air of just like felt um this heaviness you know which i just think is just the truth of the gospel and the power of it um and so yeah that was for me that was the best time um also being able to wash palm leaves for them of just like to make um a thing called ben cho i think beng choi i don't know but it's like a traditional um like palm leaf wrapped um rice and meat and quinoa maybe some kind of no bean it's a bean anyways it's a dish um and i gotta wash those leaves and just being able to serve i was just thinking about how like jesus would wash the leaves and how jesus washed the feet and how he just was really a servant and how like the best thing i can do to show the gospel is like serve and serve and serve and serve and serve beyond i think my own capacity is and serve beyond like being asked to like sure i'm asked to wash the dishes but i don't just want to wash the dishes i want to cook the meal i want to wash the dishes i want to fold the laundry like anything to give them even just an ounce of a break is what I'm called to do because I can serve without lack because my God like fulfills me. Um, so that's what I got the most. That was my biggest takeaway and my biggest like love was just being able to serve people and have those conversations through serving them about Jesus. Um, my biggest hardship I think is the one that people ask too. Like um, I'll say personally and like as like an outreach, um, I think personally but my biggest hardship was, um, hmm, it's always hard because I love living with people. I love living with people 
24 7 i think my biggest hardship was though um like getting up and going like some days you're just really tired you're just exhausted you don't get a lot of sleep i mean sometimes we slept in cold places we slept on the floor we just slept um in weird circumstances or, or we just had late nights early mornings and i think learning to go without any sleep and the coffee in vietnam isn't my cup of tea um so you just kind of have to go and you know and and we went to um vietnam the lower half in sapa and it was really hot and it was so hot and so like you're tired and your days are long and you're still you have to go out every day and show up and sometimes you don't see crazy god always moves but sometimes it's not like this crazy like oh my gosh ten thousand people were coming to christ you know but sometimes you just have conversations with people and you don't even bring up christ you just bring up love and and that communication you just serve them you know and that's equally important in the kingdom but um yeah it's hard every morning like being like okay I'm gonna get up I'm gonna show up whether I feel like it or not and it's always rewarding I mean I always I, it was hard to push through that boundary but once you push through it and break through it you're just like why why why, why would I not want to do this you know um so showing up every day like full 100% um and then as a team I think the hardest thing is just like um finding where different people like do different things like we all actually like act differently and function differently as people and so like where my strengths are is not going to be someone else's strength and where my weaknesses are going to be someone else's strengths which makes it beautiful and that's what you need in a team but at the same time there can be conflicts um there's a lot of like we had a lot of leadership in our team so like who can take the lead and and honoring everyone um and having everyone get a chance to lead if they wanted to but also like honoring the person who was leading and not trying to overtake them if you were strong leadership was something we walked through um but by the end we actually were doing really well in that and just like i think we all grew a lot um and in vietnam the biggest hardship i think um gospel spreading wise mission wise was um some language some places we had to like translate three or four times two or three times to get them in the language um but i think also it's just like having people understand that mostly it's a muslim country and having people understand that like jesus actually died for them and like loves them there's a huge honor culture in vietnam and family culture and like a lot of families will be muslim and you do get persecuted like you can be thrown in jail um you can you can be like killed for like proclaiming jesus in vietnam and so it is like it, people their families they they are scared of like accepting jesus because it's like their whole family might look down on them it's a big step it's it's a risk but there's nothing more worth it you know and, and the people who do accept jesus know that there's nothing more worth it. and the people that even hear about jesus a lot of them are like wow i want to turn to this even through the risk even though my family might not like agree with me like this is worth it um so it's the biggest hardship but it's also the most beautiful thing to see the the truth of the gospel really stands on firm foundation of like i believe um and i know and i've seen it that though it's hard sometimes for people to get in that mindset and like break through those like natural things that we worry about when we actually just focus on jesus like it all just fades away um and i think some people got that and some people though um had a struggle like breaking through all the worries of general life which is so fair um okay what well, i don't know many other questions people ask um missions wise like what's it like being a missionary what's it like doing missions life um it's amazing it's wonderful it's just like living life in any other place but in another country i think the only big difference i noticed is that um sometimes in our like when we go in our western homes we tend to like lay back but really there i just want to be present every day making sure i'm serving every day making sure i'm honoring christ every day and coming back that's something that i actually wanted to bring back and that i did bring back was just like okay i'm going to be full every day i'm going to show up every day like every day is a full opportunity to serve jesus whether that's like actually proclaiming his name um or if it's just showing the love you know um so yeah that was my outreach experience i mean there's so many stories we got to give bibles and people's original language to them when they've never heard it we got to spread the gospel and, and see people come to christ we got invited to like weddings um of towns and just got to join in with their fun and their celebration and i mean it truly changed my life it was beautiful and wonderful and i think that everyone should do that and and YWAM as an organization, they have great leaders. They had people taking care of like financial and, and scheduling activities and doing things. And my leader specifically was just so amazing, but also like all the leaders that they train up are just so well-trained um, to do missions and to like, you really just get an experience. Um, and so that being said, like even talking about the YWAM culture of just like, people wonder things like, is YWAM a cult? Is YWAM like good X, Y, and Z? And I think to that, I would just say like, I would just like ignore all the rumors because you know i i've heard it too and i honestly i think any functioning organization in christ is going to get like hate and pushback but also like ywam is the furthest thing from a cult like i've i've 
walked into a Croatian and religious like organization that formed more like a cult and had to like get the discernment to leave. And YWAM is not like that. Like they're very open. They're joined with other organizations. They let you do your own thing. They let you break apart. They just have, they're just an organization with like rules. And I think sometimes people get stuck up on that, but honestly like um if you're going to an organization that's christian and that's missions focused and if you're doing missions life like you cannot be fully walking and actively in sin or be distracted when you're doing missions like you can't be going and having a party mind of drinking or doing drugs and you can't be like and let like you can't be pursuing relationships more than you're pursuing god um because you're actually trying to tell people about this god and and if your relationships with other people in your dts are bigger than you telling people about god like that's not um gonna function properly in your own heart and they just like it's for your own growth you know and i think also it's just to keep um everyone safe and like there is kids on base and stuff like that so i think sometimes people get like oh why we am like they have all these rules and they're very strict but really it's not like it's not like that they're very chill very cool very they walk like god and so much mercy and um grace but also just like okay this is like how we run things and this is like we have to do it like this for a certain way because we've seen bad uh, things happen and we want to keep you safe and we also just want the best for your experience and i believe that but they're very open you can talk about anything you do in ywam and though there's some things that are like there's a bunch of denominations there so sometimes you're like oh is this like what is this in the bible or like asking questions about that i think that's fine um i think sometimes like holy spirit wise people can be like wow this is really holy spirit and if you're not used to that it can be like a little intimidating but i think that's our comfort zone thing where it's like is this like are you um thinking that this is unbiblical or are you uncomfortable and using that as an excuse because like as i can say is biblically like it says that we can do all that jesus did and jesus cast out demons and he healed the sick and he functioned in the holy spirit and we were giving all that so uh it's not like that it functions as the bible functions as we see the lead of jesus that's the what the organization tries their best to do and i fully believe that i love ywam um I'm no longer even in my room. I did the DTS, but I'm with my own church um, doing something else that I'm really excited for. But I still honor and praise it as an organization. I think everyone should do it because getting six months away from your hometown life, the, the friends and the family that you might have got used to, the way that you experience God in your own bubble, um, being able to get out of that and just being able to experience God in a whole new way um, transforms you as a person, but also just like um, really like test like, am I here for Jesus or am I, was I told like to follow Jesus? Was I even serious about it? Like it really just pushes you to be like, okay, is this the life I want? Like, do I want to follow God with everything I have? And I think we all need that. Um, and even if you're not sure, even if you are ever thought about God, I think going to YM is good because you learn so much about God. Like you learn so much that there's no choice but to love God because you learn that he's so good and you learn about his character. And you're just like, how could I not serve my whole life like to God? And like share about jesus because he's the glory he's the goodness he transforms he loves he loves when no one else does he he goes for the lost it's crazy i mean that's all i gotta say is go ywam or any mission school i mean i think you gotta do it you gotta t take those months away and i think everyone should go on a missions trip like for two months and, and lay down your rights and do something hard and do something you th didn't think you could do because i think my biggest thing i learned from ywam is that i can i can do hard things like I can seriously do hard things. We did really hard things sometimes and people did harder things than us. And I just realized like, yeah, I can do it because God is good. God is faithful and I'm stronger than I thought. Um, so yeah, that's my experience at YWAM. I mean, if you want me to go more in depth or if you have questions, please like let me know whether you're commenting it, emailing me, I don't know anything. Um, you can DM me on Instagram, but um, yeah, whatever it is, I would love to answer more questions, but I hope that gave a general idea overall. I just gotta say, man, God is so good. Um, all the glory to him. I mean, it ignited me for missions for the rest of my life. I mean, I always know I wanted to do missions, but I wasn't sure until I was on the missions field and I was like, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be. Like, I know, I know that I'm called because my heart just sang. And I think a lot of people in my outreach and all outreaches found out where their heart sings, whether it's missions or whether it's through missions, they were like teaching and they figured out it's teaching or they were pastoring and they were leading a sermon and they realized that was it, or they were worshiping and they realized that was it. Like. You just get this experience like you just don't get anywhere else and well you get it in other organizations but i just mean like you just to grow and to learn it i think that everyone needs to do a missions trip and i think that um i'm marked for missions yeah and i'm excited to see what that journey comes on and i hope you guys come along with me to just experience that to live that and to see where god leads me i've already known some places that i'm hoping to go praying into going so i'm just really praying he opens doors for that and thank you so much for listening i hope you guys just have an amazing time um for the rest of your day and yeah if you have any questions just leave them below and i'll 
insert um, my Instagram so you guys can check out some pictures of me now or DM me or anything like that. Okay, as the dog barks, um, I will go. Love you guys. Bye.